you have thoughts, you have ideas, you have opinions, you have perspectives, you have preferences. And it goes without saying that everybody does. But where you're going to need boundaries around them is when somebody comes in and tries to violate yours. These are called intellectual boundaries. And these are important to have because without them, we can feel small or belittled or ridiculed or shamed or criticized for simply being a human being who exists with a perspective that someone else might not share. So what do we do? What do these boundary violations look like when it comes to intellectual boundaries? And how do we set them? We're going to talk about all of that today. So stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome to our incredible little corner on the internet. Take a second, introduce yourself in the comment section below. Back again. Always good to have you. Say hello and special shout out to my shifters. Really great to have you here. If you haven't, subscribe to the channel. Do that. Like the video if you get something out of it. And uh, either way, my name is Julia Christina, and I am a registered clinical therapist, a researcher, a coach, and the creator of my membership community, The Shift Society, where the humans who are heart-centered are taking this work to a deeper level, being supported, guided, and coached the whole way through. You can get more information in the description below. I help heart-centered humans break through the crap that is holding them back so that they can like themselves and their lives more every day. And if you've ever been in a conversation where someone has ridiculed you for your idea or your opinion, where they've been like, oh, that's dumb, or like, what are you thinking? Or who thinks like that? Or what's wrong with you? Or obviously you don't know what you're talking about. Obviously you're an idiot. Those are intellectual boundary violations where someone is attempting to and probably being very successful at inflicting harm on someone for something that they are doing that is harmless. So what do we do about this? How do we handle this? Well, first of all, it goes with, uh, no, kind of doesn't go without saying in this day and age, but we need to be having respect for other people's ideas, even if we don't agree. We need to be having respect for differences in perspectives, even when we don't see things the same way. Instead of criticizing someone for a perspective that you might not or very much do not agree with, get curious. Every human is coming from somewhere for some reason. Look a little bit deeper. Try to understand the bigger context. There's that saying that says, people are hard to hate up close. And the more you get to know people and truly understand where they're coming from and why they are coming from those places or think the way they do or have ideas that they have or perceive things the way that they perceive them, the less likely you are to judge them, to look down on them, to think badly of them and vice versa for all of us. I don't think any of us are free from having at some point looked down on someone for thinking something different, judge someone for having a different idea or opinion. Now we're going to talk about a caveat to that in just a minute. Obviously when it comes to harmful opinions or viewpoints, there is going to be more clear lines in the sand around that. But if we could just all work on choosing curiosity over criticism when someone has a perspective or an idea that we might not agree with, I think we can all agree that this world would become a much better place and it doesn't take much to do it. Having differences, having space for someone else's differences, creating understanding around their differences, having that curiosity and getting that bigger context of where they're coming from doesn't mean that we have to agree with them. It doesn't mean we have to see things their way. 
It doesn't mean that we also can't have some constructive or challenging conversations, that we can't go into a discussion with someone. But keeping it classy, keeping it respectful, keeping it on a fair playing field and not going for the knees, flinging mud, trying to make someone go down, pushing someone down in order to boost ourselves up. Punching down is not okay. There needs to be space for people to be able to share their opinions. There needs to be space for people to be living in their full expression of their humanity, of how they feel, what's important to them, what's not important to them, what's important to us, what's not important to us, what we like, what we dislike, being able to give ourselves the freedom for that. I remember several years ago when one of my friends met her soon-to-be husband on one of their first dates. They were having a conversation and he was really into music. Like he is a musician. He is serious about it. He knows like the innuendos and the crescendos and all of the intricacies of like cool kind of indie, off-the-cup, non-mainstream music. And I remember in one of their first conversations, he was trying to explain all of this stuff to her. And because she had done her work to fully accept and embrace herself, she said, that's all really interesting. And I still have to say, one of my favorite artists is Taylor Swift. <laughs> Not to say that Taylor Swift doesn't have some a lot of things going for her. The woman is doing great. But when it comes to sort of off the cuff indie, kind of that deeper sort of um, kind of niche uh, expertise around music. I wouldn't say that she necessarily falls into that category, but she knew herself and she was able to say, you know what, this is what I think. This is what I like. This is how I feel about it. And you can think that it's ridiculous or, or silly, or it's not justifiable. That's okay. But this is what I like. John Gottman, who is one of the most influential minds when it comes to research and understanding around relationships and how to make relationships work and what absolutely prevents relationships from working has written, researched, and shared extensively on this topic. And in his book, The Seven Principles of Making Marriages Work, he says that there are four horsemen of the apocalypse. This is what he calls them four things that are relationship destroyers, that if they are not addressed, repaired, and not repeated, will kill a relationship. And one of those things is contempt. When we are spoken to or we speak to someone with contempt, it erodes any foundation of trust in the relationship. When we mock we use sarcasm, we are being condescending with people, we are hostile when we are talking to them, we are name calling, mimicking, looking down on them, rolling the eyes, sneering, jeering, all of those things communicate contempt. It communicates that you are above, they are below, they are inferior, you are superior, and you are looking down on them in an attempt to make them feel ashamed for who they are or how they are. And when this is repeated without reparation or an attempt to stop this behavior in a relationship, it will erode the relationship completely. And so this can happen a lot when people have different ideas that they disagree with with someone else as they use contempt. Now, of course, many if not all of us have used contempt when we're speaking to someone else, especially when there is conflict. We're in the middle of an argument. We're feeling threatened. We're feeling scared. We are trying to use something to gain some power in the conflict. This can be a strategy that is used. But if it is used, being used against us, then it is important that we set boundaries around it. Being able to say things like, hey, I don't like the tone that you are using with me. That's not okay with me. 
when you have an idea or an opinion that is different than mine, please be respectful with that. You can have strong emotions about it, but you don't need to be rude or aggressive or belittling or try to shame me about it. I don't like that. That's not okay with me. If you're going to continue to speak to me in this way, then I am going to remove myself from the conversation if or until you can speak to me with more respect. If someone is looking down on you and judging you or kind of acting superior to you, you can even just simply say, we have differences in opinions. You might think that you are right. I also think that I am right. So let's agree to respect that we have differences on this particular thing. I remember several years ago, I was having a conversation with my husband at the time, and we were talking about using logic to make decisions versus using emotion to make decisions. And you're never going to guess which one I was arguing for. He's an engineer, so you can guess what he was arguing for. I am a therapist. You can guess what I was arguing for. Now, I'm not saying that logic and reason are not valuable decision-making um, skills to have decision-making parameters to bring in there, but emotion also counts. And he was basically saying there is nothing superior to logic and reason when it comes to making decisions. And I said they are valuable when making a decision as are emotions. I can tell you there have been several decisions that I've made in my life, not necessarily because I could outline all the pros and cons or give you a list of the cost benefit analysis, but because it felt right. I just sort of knew in my gut and I decided to go with it from that. Maybe even on paper, it didn't make the most logical sense, but I knew in my gut that this was the right decision. And we had this back and forth and, you know, it was going on for a little while and he was adamant that he was right and I was wrong. And finally I said, you know what, can we agree that both logic and reason and emotion and intuition are all valuable aspects of making a decision? Sometimes some are more going to be in a certain situation, we're going to use some of more of them. Sometimes we're going to use more of another one, depending on the situation. And I could see that somewhat reluctantly, he agreed. But what I wasn't interested in is being put down for having a different opinion. And I did make that clear. And I said to him, you know what? You think that this is the right thing. I think that this is the right thing. You obviously have a strong opinion. I obviously have a strong opinion. So let's just agree that we have different perspectives and that neither person is more or less because of it. And this is one thing when it comes to intellectual boundaries, being able to communicate that and being able to say, just because I see something differently than you do, it doesn't make me less of a person. It doesn't make me less valuable than you. It doesn't make me available to your ridicule, to your put downs, to your sneering and jeering. That is not okay. You are allowed to disagree with me. I'm allowed to disagree with you, but let us agree to be respectful in those disagreements. Now I'm going to teach you a few more specific phrases that you can use to set intellectual boundaries depending on the situation. And again, wording it in a way that feels right for you. These are suggestions for you to go with, play with, practice with, and see what makes sense. Again, when it comes to boundaries though, making sure that whatever language you choose to use, you are being clear. I know sometimes we don't want to hurt someone's feelings. We don't want to upset anyone. We don't want to put anyone off. We don't want to make anyone uncomfortable. And so we dance around the issue and kind of imply things, but don't make it clear. And often then the message is not clear and the expectation is not clear and the outcome does not end up being what we were aiming for or hoping for. So trying to make it as clear as possible and there absolutely is a way to be clear yet still kind in your communication. So working on that, it is something to develop and the more you do it, the easier it will get. But it has to start with you believing that you are allowed to set these boundaries. The boundaries don't mean you are mean, Boundaries mean you are clear. You are setting the relationship up for success by everyone knowing what is happening, 
what is not okay to happen, what is okay to happen, what people want, what they don't want, and what the outcome might be if that boundary is crossed or what that outcome will be if that boundary is cro crossed. Like we said, if you continue to speak to me in this, in this way, I am going to end the conversation because I am not available for being disrespected, being treated or talked to in that way. Another example that we can look at here is setting an intellectual boundary around timing with the conversation. You're allowed to say, this is an important thing that we talk about. I don't think doing it in front of our friends or while we're out with friends or while we're having a Sunday night dinner with your family is the best time to hash this all out. Being able to say, every time we talk about this, if it's a conversation that ends up going nowhere, that just ends up turning into an argument because both people are very set and wanting to convince the other person, but neither person is willing to be convinced, being able to set that, that boundary and say, you know what, every time we have this conversation, it doesn't go anywhere helpful. Let's end the conversation and talk about something else. That is an intellectual boundary that's saying, I'm not going to use my intellect in a fruitless way. I'm not going to have my mind and emotional bound or my mind and emotional energy going into something that is not getting anything helpful in return. Being able to simply say, I respect that we have different ideas about this, different opinions about this, different perspectives on this, and I hope that you can respect that too. A few weeks ago, I was out with some friends at this like group event and there were some people there obviously that I didn't know and at one point this guy came up that knew some people that I was sitting with and I don't know how we started talking about it but somehow we got into a conversation about the Canadian government and how much of a waste it was for the Canadian government to um, be requiring that school-aged children learn French in school. Now, he had very strong opinions about this, and I'm not here to say what is the right opinion, where government should be spending, where government waste is, what blah, blah, blah. I'm not, I'm not here to have that discussion. I wasn't interested in having that discussion. What I know is that Canada is a bilingual country. We're officially bilingual, and as such, such it is a requirement that all children in Canada, in the public school system, learn a certain degree of French at some point. Now, I happen to choose to put my children in French immersion, and that was a decision I made. That was something that I did when I was a child, and there's reasons for that. But regardless of what my reasons are, this person basically came and said that it's a waste of time, it's a waste of government resources, it's stupid, it point, it's pointless, and it shouldn't be happening. And I engaged him a bit in the conversation. We had a little bit of a back and forth about it. Of course, this particular issue is not a mountain that I felt I needed to die on, but I do have some opinions about it. Obviously, I value it because I have been invested in the system myself. I have invested my children into the system. And so we had a bit of a back and forth. But after a few minutes of the conversation, I could see that he wasn't really interested in having a back and forth discussion. He was only interested in having a fight and being right. <laughs> And I could just tell. I have definitely had discussions with people that are open to seeing things from a different perspective, to trying to create a different understanding. Even if they don't agree, they're open. This person was not. And so I set a boundary in there. I decided I didn't want to keep going back and forth on a conversation that wasn't benefiting anyone. And it was just wasting a bunch of time and energy. And I just kind of said, you know what? It sounds like we both have opinions on this particular matter. And yours is quite a strong opinion. You're not interested in seeing anything from any other perspective or idea. And that's okay. That's your prerogative. So let's talk about something else. And then we just started talking about kids' sports and the sports that our kids liked because he had kids the same age as mine. And the conversation went on from there. So that is setting an intellectual boundaries boundary. It's about what you're willing to talk about, what you're not willing to talk about. I'm not willing to discuss my weight, my relationship status, where I'm living, my job, my career trajectory. If you're not willing to discuss those things, if they are topics that are off the table, then they are off the table. And you can make that clear, or you can choose to just not respond when those questions are asked. And that gives a pretty clear communication that it's not a conversation that you are interested in in having. Now, when it comes to being around someone who is sharing their thoughts or opinions 
that are inherently harmful, such as using racism, sexism, homophobia, xenophobia, transphobia, any of those in a conversation, you have every right to be strict and clear and letting them know that you are not available for that kind of talk, that that kind of top talk is absolutely not welcomed and not okay. You can leave the conversation, you can leave the situation or the house that you're at if you are really not comfortable there, or you can ask them to leave your space, your home, if they are insisting on being harmful with their words. Now, maybe you are in a space where you have your ground, your feet firmly under your ground, you're feeling strong and confident and unshakable, and you want to engage that conversation and use curiosity and try to understand how did this person develop these hateful or harmful ideas or opinions? Where is this coming from? Why is this coming up? What would cause someone to act in these ways and think these things? And you can take that sense and try to understand. And now you may engage in a conversation in that way to a certain extent, and then you maybe realize it's not going anywhere, or it's really starting to trigger you, or it's not okay with you, or they start to be harmful towards you. And then at any point you can be like, yeah, nope, I am out. <laughs> nope, done. This conversation is finished. And that's that. So again, you get to decide where you're at with that, but absolutely, if you're like, you know what, there is no space in my space for this kind of talk. So either change your tune or shuffle yourself on out. So either we change the topic to something that doesn't include any kind of hate or harm talk in any way, or if that's not possible, then either I am going to leave if you're in someone else's space or ask them to leave if they are in your space. You have a right to always feel safe, mentally, emotionally, physically. You have a right to draw a line in the sand if someone is violating that in any way. You are allowed to make it abundantly clear that this is not okay. Setting those intellectual boundaries when it comes to maybe the things with a little bit more innuendo around being able to respect different opinions and speaking about things in different ways. And if something is feeling disrespectful to you, if it's feeling like someone is being unkind or belittling or critical or undermining of you, being able to catch that, if it doesn't feel right, then chances are it's not going well. <laughs> being able to speak up to that and then all the way to the very much more clear intellectual boundary violations that are about hate or harm talk, being able to set those boundaries, know where there's where those boundaries are for you, and knowing that you are allowed to have them. We're all different. We all have different ideas, thoughts, opinions, perspectives for all different kinds of reasons. No one is allowed to tell you how you think or how you should feel. How you'll know without a doubt that your intellectual boundaries are being or have been damaged or violated in some way is if you have this deep sense that you can't speak up and say anything. If you have this feeling that if you share your wants, your ideas, your opinions, your preferences, your perspectives, your goals, or your dreams, that you will be ridiculed, belittled, bullied, put down, criticized, or judged then you know that this is a sign that it is time to speak up and set those boundaries. What feels more clear to you now? What do you understand now about intellectual boundaries that you didn't understand before? What is connecting? What is making sense? Where are you going to start? What was one of your takeaways from this talk today? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear it. Until next time, take good care of yourselves. Take good care of those around you. Expect respect 
and be worthy of that respect by also giving respect. Always good to have you here. See you soon.